name is Simone Sibwe and I have created a documentary for my nature writing course at Loyola Marymount University. In this documentary, I will be interviewing Barbara Lane Peart and Dave Koop, both of whom are located in Sacramento and have been Rosarians for the past 10 plus years. According to the American Rose Society, consulting Rosarians are trained to provide important information on rose culture. The necessary requirements of becoming a consulting Rosarian is that they have to be a member of the American Rose Society for at least two years, they have to have at least five years of experience growing roses, and they have to take classes in order to successfully complete certifications and consulting Rosarian school. Consulting Rosarians willingly and enthusiastically share their time and talent with both new and old Rosarians, as well as provide basic and advanced information to the Rosarian. Many years ago, my first rose was given to me on Mother's Day. Its name was Color Magic. And that was the beginning of being a Rosarian. Now I'm an addict. I'm from the United Kingdom and we, we are a land of gardeners. Okay. And consequently, gardening came easy, and roses became my life very quickly. I was in the Navy for 22 years and finished up my Navy career in San Diego. And my first wife and I built a house up there in Auburn. And I happened to buy a couple of those drugstore roses, you know, in the little plastic bag to plant in front of the new house. And just happened to see in the newspaper an ad for the Rose Society meeting. Uh, and it was the, the following night on a Tuesday night. And they had a little Rose show meeting. I mean, a, like a Rose show in the meeting and happened to look at some of the roses and said, oh my God, these are gorgeous. Uh, I gotta have that one. What's the name of that one? then went back to the second meeting the next month. And that's when I joined the Rose Society and I've been a member ever since. I think becoming a Rose Show judge and a consulting was very no easy feat. Lots of classes, uh, lots of tests, two day tests for um, Rose Show judge. Winning, king of the show, once queen of the show, I should add that I, I have been on the board of several different Rose Societies, Vice President, Treasurer, Secretary, you mm. name it, I've done it. In 2014, it's not too long ago, um, my wife and I purchased a, a home on one acre of land. And the back third of that uh, property was absolutely blank. So we designed and planted a large rose garden. The garden now holds about 500 roses in the ground. And year after year, we see housing developments with smaller and smaller yards around them. We're so thankful that we have a little bit of paradise here. And we get so much satisfaction from functions that we host here and people get to experience the joy of a peaceful rose garden. So that's, mm -hmm. that's our, our biggest achievement. I had been a consulting rosarian, active consulting rosarian for 10 years. It was probably three or four years ago. I got the master rosarian um, awarded to me. That was also a, an accomplishment. A gardener is anybody really that grows any living thing, shrubs, perennials, trees, vegetables. They become a rosarian when they start adding roses. Okay. A rosarian could be considered a subclass of gardener. A rosarian is one who's gained knowledge of all the aspects of growing roses. Uh, a consulting rosarian has grown roses at least two years and has been recommended by other consulting rosarians and passed a knowledge test given by the American Rose Society. So you can be a rosarian and not be a consulting rosarian.
Well, the garden started 44 years ago. Scrub, no trees, no fences, rocks, a wilderness, it's a third of an acre. But as the years passed by, the rose beds, they were one foot, two foot, three foot, now they're 10 feet. Um, it's a beautiful garden, 300 plus roses. I'm a collector of English roses, which are David Austin roses from England. They're in the front garden, we have no lawn there. In the back, I have miniatures, maybe 40 in a bed. The garden is mostly informal with casual pathways that radiate from the, the center 20 foot circle. Each pathway starts with a, an arch that has climbing roses on it. The roses that we planted initially were planted with the, the height of the rose bush and the color of the rose bush as a primary consideration. Another thing about our garden, we've just during the last year, we've added a couple shaded spots for people to sit and enjoy the garden. And two different times people have come and said that they, they just really thoroughly enjoyed being out there. We do grow other plants, but the roses are primary. First, you choose the correct rose. Well, you can do trial and error as I did, but to avoid that, I suggest joining the American Rose Society once a year. They give you a, a compilation of roses that have won shows throughout the country. You then know which roses to order. Then you give them water, you feed them, you love them, and hope for the best. You win queen of the show by having first the correct rose. You have good form, good color. Uh, 25 points go uh, toward the form of the rose, 20 towards the color and substance, and so on, to 100 points. For exhibition purposes, that rose with the pinpoint center uh, needs to maintain that pinpoint center, but also the outside petals should be somewhat horizontal. So it should open up to where that, that bottom row of petals is horizontal. Then in addition to that, a nice straight stem and nice healthy looking foliage. So that's the ideal. So when you're judging, sometimes there isn't one that looks exactly like that. So we have to compare it to what else is on the table. If we feel that none of them warrant that, that number one prize, then we have the option of saying, none of them get best of class. It really has to do with that form and substance of the rose. I might cut them a little bit tighter so that I know by the time I get to the show, they will have opened up a little bit more. And then I can tweak those petals out so that they come a little bit more horizontal. A lot of the exhibitors use Q-tips. They'll stick them down into the bloom and use the Q-tips to kind of hold those petals out for a little while. Because if you do that, then the water coming up will make them stay that way. They have been affected, and, but they have adapted amazingly well. The first sign I saw in my garden was last year when we had no rain from March until November and many, many days of 100 plus and I lost roses. Mm. They were frazzled from the heat. However, most plants, including roses, have adapted. Whether they can continue to adapt is a question. I'm not sure. Hopefully they will. I don't believe that climate change has a dramatic effect on growing roses. It's affected us more <laughs> because with the longer, hotter growing seasons, it's really hard to grow roses that get watered sufficiently. The climate change is changing our, our environment here in the valley to uh, it's getting closer to being desert-like during the summertime. 
So before we got the solar, our water bill was running uh, at least $500 a month just to water those roses. So climate change has affected uh, how many roses people can grow because you just can't afford to water that many roses. When I set up that garden, I, I went to a plumbing supply house and got a very special drip system. A drip system will very slowly soak into the ground. Yeah, the drip system is really important for us gardeners. Very important. The ecosystem has to continue. There are insects that depend on plants. There are birds that depend on insects. There are animals that depend on plants. And there's human beings who depend on plants. We have to get a grip somehow. There's a, a like heritage rose groups and they only focus on the old garden roses and antique roses. They're an interesting group of people. They, their outings generally take them to old cemeteries up in the hills. Hmm. And, and they go to those cemeteries looking for rose bushes because you know, if, if the people were buried in the 1800s, the, the families generally would plant a rose. Mm -hmm. And some of those old roses cannot be found in commerce anymore. If any of the canes have rooted, they'll take a rooted uh, one, bring it to their members and grow it on and try to identify it. They have all these historical records of roses so they can look back on the records and say, oh, I know what this rose is, and nobody else has it. The only rose that I know that's native to, to California is called Rosa canina. And can, canine is the word for dog. So it's also called the dog rose. It's been found in cemeteries all across the state and along roadsides, there's, it, it's quite a vigorous rose. It only blooms once, once in the spring, and it's very fragrant. I do have a rose that's unique, is considered a species rose that dates back to early China, and it's called the green rose. And, and the bloom on it is all green. It really doesn't look like a rose itself mm -hmm. because the petals are more like bracts. They're kind of like miniature leaves all bunched together. So it's this little green knob of really tight little green petals, but that's called the green rose and it dates back to ancient China. If I was still a consulting rosarian, I'd suggest you call me for any information, but since I'm not, I'd suggest you go to a library, find books, go online, find books, join the American Rose Society, because you will get loads of information, loads of pictures. The American Rose Society has their website, www.rose.org, they have an educational tab on their website. If you find the education tab, then you can find a lot of videos on almost any subject of growing roses. I love the catalogs. Trouble is you'll be tempted. And if you have a big pot or a spot in a garden, very soon your first rose will arrive just like my color magic. <laughs> and you may become an addict. Watch yeah. out. <laughs> I want to say a special thanks to Barbara Lane Peart, otherwise known as my grandmother, and her friend Dave Koop for the interview. I also want to thank my professor, Professor McDonnell, for granting me this opportunity to go above and beyond and create something so memorable. To those watching, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>